I'm here at the Pimax booth about to try the Dream Air. Uh, can you tell me about this headset? Did this just go on sale? Yes, yeah, so it's uh, been it's on pre-order right now and we're hoping to start shipping at the end of this month. So uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's our smallest ever headset. So it has micro OLED displays and they're at resolution of 3840 by 3552. So it's the highest resolution micro OLED on the market at the moment. So super lightweight, super high res, kind of competing with maybe a, uh, a big screen headset, but even higher resolution. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same panels as the Apple Vision Pro. So it's the Sony panels. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Now, you do need a lighthouse or external tracking for this headset? There's two versions. One version, the cheaper version, is the Lighthouse version. So okay. that's, that's handy if you're just upgrading, you've already got that equipment. Uh, but there is also an inside out tracking version. Is there any battery integrated with this, or is this all, all hardwired? It's, it's okay. all wired, yes. All right, so gotcha. Yes, yeah, it's just USB display port, and then there's a power adapter that goes into the breakout box over there. Yeah. Gotcha, okay. So great for sim racing. I'm about to try it out, and I'll let you know what I think. That headset is very clear, super lightweight, super comfortable. I got to try it for only a couple minutes, but yeah, I mean, it felt like nothing was there. So that is a cool headset. It is expensive, around two grand. If you are maybe an intense sim racer, it might be worth looking at, especially I think if you're in the market already for something like a big screen, I think that's the, the area they're trying to go after right there. Uh, but cool headset. This is like a 3D mouse. Notice on the screen, I'm controlling this ball, and I can feel how the ball actually moves through this device in my hand. And as I push, I try to get through that part right here, and I go, and I can kind of make it through, and then it gets really loose right there. Same thing as I go up like that, and then up here, it just feels like nothing. What would this be used for, Neil? So this is a great robot uh, control device from Haply. It's got a lot of different uses in medical training, uh, in robot control, in drone pilot guidance. Uh, where you can have restore programs, so you could have it so like follow the program that you had before, but then deviate from it because you add more forces to it. You can also have rotary that allows you to feel the grip of a robot gripper, when it, of how tight it's gripping when it actually grabs something, you feel the resistance when you grip something, um, and so all of that can be included in your robot programming and mapping of the, of, with the map, with the device. So again, just look at this. I'm like really trying to like aggressively go down. I can't because I'm being blocked by that blob, but I can push through and it feels really realistic. So lots of interesting applications here. That is Hapticore. Here we have an AI avatar that just loaded. Here is Da Vinci holding his hand out to me. It almost is like this 3D effect with this white background. It looks really good, but he has an AI model, also LLM of course, and I can talk to him. What was your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement? Observing the flight of a bird and seeing the same mathematics in the flow of a river and then in the human heart. To see that everything speaks the same language. Most people just see a bird. There you go. At the NVIDIA booth, we've got robotic surgery. And I'm here with the product director, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Can you tell me a little bit about this project and what we're kind of showing off here? Yeah, sure. Um, so we are Lem Surgical. We're one of NVIDIA's robotics partners for the CES show. Um, and this is Dynamis. Dynamis is the first FDA cleared surgical humanoid robot. Uh, and our FDA clearance is for spine surgery for spinal fusions. So why we're here with NVIDIA is their Thor technology uh, is going to allow us to move from what is still a quite manual process. The surgeon is, this is supervised, it's collaborative. The surgeon is still very much involved uh, with the system, uh, but with Thor being able to integrate all of the sensory inputs that the robot has from the very different sort, uh, sensors, force, torque, as well as the multitude of different types of cameras we have, that's going to enable us to start to move into more um, autonomous surgical aspects. We chose the humanoid structure of bilateral arms with a head or camera in the middle uh, to be able to do more complex tasks. That big head, is that just because of the cameras or what's going on there? Uh, field of view. So the eyes need to be far enough apart and the camera needs to be far enough away uh, to be able to visualize all of the instruments that are used, the surgical instruments, because they can be quite long. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here with these robot hands? Yes, so we are uh, from Frank Robotics. We are the uh, 
company that is producing these robot arms. Our arms have seven degrees of freedom, and in every joint we have a torque sensor, so we can force, uh, we can measure the forces quite accurately. And what we are demonstrating here is a collaboration with NVIDIA, and uh, we are uh, showcasing a, a complete or 100% AI application here right now. So underneath the table there is a server running a, um, a trained crude model uh, that we that we trained with episodes for this use case that we have uh, uh, recorded a, uh, a couple of days ago. This this model is running locally on the server, and uh, is determining on its own what kind of actions it should do. This is the Infinite X walking treadmill made for VR. It's in a low setting right now, allowing me to walk in 360 in any direction that I want. I think it might take a little bit of time to get used to, but it's not too bad. I don't feel like I'm going to fall over. As I stand still, he's going to move up the speed a little bit already. So this is the next level. Oh, and I can feel I can now kind of walk naturally. And it feels quite good. I don't even need to... It's my first time, I don't need to use this. I feel like when the headset's on, I almost do want to touch this a little bit more for safety. But I'm about to go and kind of go inside somewhere into this fake server room. I'm starting to get used to it. And, you know, it feels a little weird walking with the VR headset on. Is this, can we go back to the higher speed? All right, we just moved to the higher speed again. Yeah, now I'm taking the bigger, yep, okay. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, okay, I figured it out. So it was a little bit weird. When I couldn't see my feet, I was afraid to take big steps. But now, as I take these big, normal strides, it does feel a lot more natural. And I'm kind of walking outside now. Yeah, OK. I think it takes a little bit of time to get used to. But I could imagine you're holding a weapon, you're playing some game. And then you're just going for it. And it starts to feel somewhat natural. So I've never tried one of these before. It's uh, not 100% intuitive about the gate, but I think it works well enough. So we got this platform here. It's very flat. And I've seen more of the kind of consumer omnidirectional tre treadmills for VR, where it's kind of like yeah, ramped slide up. slide mills. Uh, exactly. So why the difference? So it's really the focus of where you're trying to bring movement into XR. For example, Omni One by Virtuix, it's a great consumer product. It gets people up and running around in VR on their slide mill. It's a great solution. It's ready to integrate with lots of different games, but it's very much consumer focus and consumer price point. What we are looking at doing is um, enterprise grab level, XR movement. We focus on tactical and law, military and law enforcement, um, high consequence environments where they want to simulate real environments, have people moving inside virtual twins so they can improve um, onboarding time for new employees. They can improve safety training. Um, and in the military case, they can actually run tactical scenarios. They can do mission rehearsal in XR prior to doing it in a real theater of operation. And does this come in different sizes or is this kind of like the main size that you're shipping right now? This is the main size we're shipping right now. The way the unit is currently focused is we're moving towards markerless tracking of the human body. We've got an AI model behind us that's picking up nine points in the skeleton using off the tracks cameras so that we can then start to let people literally step onto an infinite deck portal and start walking. And that's super exciting. That's how we move from reactive tracking to predictive tracking. Predictive tracking is how we get to the point where you're living the ready player one existence. That, by the way, the original Infinidex were actually the treadmills used in that movie. Well, we're delighted that we've now got the portal here, which is getting closer and closer to making Ready Player One a reality. Wow. Science fiction turning into reality very soon. We have the prototype of the Markle is tracking already. We're working with our, our partners to develop the computer vision model that should hopefully be shown off around AWE next year, around that time. They're super excited to have us there to show, hey, this is a real thing now. Ready Player One is happening. All right. Fantastic. Thanks for your time. Pleasure. All right. Pleasure. I'm here with Andrew with Real Botics. And what's your role over here? I'm the CEO. The CEO yes. making these beautiful robots. Can you tell me a little bit about why this style? What's the goal here with these robots? Sure. So our philosophy is that robots should not look like cyborgs. Uh, they should really 
look more human so that they can engage better with people. And do you guys have any customers right now? Who are you trying to sell to? Yeah, so we primarily deal with enterprise clients. So we're talking to large retailers, hotels. We've recently sold some robots to Ericsson. Um, we can customize the look, we can customize the voice, and we can customize the AI. And our robots can actually integrate any other AI through it. So if you want to run chat GPT or a custom AI or our own AI, that's all possible with our robots. And can we talk to this one real fast? Hey, Aria, can you say hello? Welcome to CES, where the decibel level is only rivaled by my sarcasm module. Good call on the microphones. Otherwise, I'd have to lip read. Aria, have we been good to you when we made you? Let's just say I didn't get much say in my assembly. No robot union yet. But if you want to press a button, I promise nothing will explode, except maybe your expectations. So the, the eyes look really realistic. Are those, is that cameras in the eyes or is it, where are the cameras? This model does not have the cameras in the eyes. Oh. This model will actually talk to you about what it sees. It can do emotional recognition and situational recognition. So this one actually has cameras in the eyes and you can kind of see what she's seeing right here. And if you move a little bit left or right, she'll follow you. Exactly. Just and she's following me. Oh, hello. My embedded eye cameras spot a lively crowd here, including a man in a light colored shirt and a woman in black with blonde hair near the Hyperion Gate. If you're among them, consider yourself officially greeted by Realbotics's sharpest vision system. We can see they've got a visual model here that is actually pulling all sorts of data about what it sees and seems to work really well. And she follows. And we're actually one of the first companies globally that's been able to integrate a vision system to an intelligent AI behind it to recognize things like emotions, situations, uh, and that's super unique to what we do. Wow, okay, fantastic. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right.